The Curious Case of James Borrego and the Conspiracy Against LaMelo Ball. Right now in the Lit House. Like, subscribe, run it up, run it up, take your shoes off, you know the day. Let's go! Yeah, yeah. Bitches cause I bought them mean I play them wrong. Yeah. I hop off the jet and count a hundred dollars. Yeah. If it ain't money, what you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Out of my bitch. Yeah. Charlotte's Hornets fans could not contain their excitement when they found out that James Borrego was being hired, and Mitch Kupchak didn't do anything to douse those flames. Um, we're very, very excited uh, with our hire uh, of yesterday. He signed his contract. Um, there were so many boxes that we felt need to be checked uh, when looking for the new head coach for this organization, and we felt uh, James I checked um, all the boxes. Mitch Kupchak stated reasons for hire for Coach James Borrego being his illustrious pedigree with the San Antonio Spurs. He even mentioned that James Borrego won a, two rings under the tutelage of Greg Popovich while also leaving out they were in the video room. Now, he also mentions the New Orleans Hornets, the time that James Borrego spent with the New Orleans Hornets, which this is... Stinking is up, this stinking up a whole damn city! Yeah, we kind of know how that turned out. Also, he uses, and this is an important point, James Borrego's time as the Orlando Magic head coach for 30 games. That 30-game stretch... Borrego left a lot to be desired, no excuses for the players, no excuses for the coaches, with a record of 10. And You're trash, Brock. Let's first examine Coach James Borrego's record. Look at this. A record of 119 wins to 144 losses in most fan bases would be considered atrocious, but for the Charlotte Hornets, a lot of their fans who are used to being jaded and used to being considered a small franchise, they look at these numbers and they look at James Rago's recent success as a product of the system, not a product of just drafting LaMelo Ball. So even though the record is horrendous, they don't look at it that way. They see it as the sun peaking, not the sun setting. Let's continue. In order for LaMelo Ball to become the most jaded and disrespected young star in the league, it didn't just start with the Charlotte Hornets. No, 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 no. A, a, a prejudice had to be cultivated over time. And thanks to terrible scout takes, and yes, we kept the fouls. Before the draft, and analysts on TV, you know, old media, the Charlotte Hornets were able to get LaMelo as this Come to Jesus charity case. Let's roll the footage. We kept it. I'm Frank Michael Smith, and I'm about to explain exactly why you do not want LaMelo Ball on your team. He's got the weirdest, funkiest three point shot. It's like this some kind of a two hand push. <laughs> so with Lonzo, we had the opposite way. We had right. him shooting From over the here. And, and finally, last year, he, he finally started to rid himself mm -hmm. of that terrible habit. But I'm seeing these kids are spoiled rotten by their father. And, and I, I enjoy their father when we have him on. But LeVar destroyed the first young man coming out, Lonzo, when, when he said he's going to be better than Steph Curry before he dribbled one ball in the NBA. You, you can't 
paint that big a target on that right. kid's back. He's taken number two overall. <laughs> That tape was I, and you know it is I. El Busto of this draft is who, Robbie? I hate to do this because I feel like I'm like overly negative, but yeah. Lamelo Ball. I just you if you it. cannot shoot at the point guard position, how has that worked out for anybody in the last ten years in the NBA? They are going to go under and then go under again and under again, and then they're going to get to the charge arc and they might go under there. Like that's what I think about when I look at Lamelo Ball. They're going to go under forever. And to me, like, Lonzo was a really good player at UCLA, and he's a solid pro, but you could almost say that his NBA career has been, I'm not going to say a bust because he's a solid player. It's been disappointing for the number two pick. When you get drafted number one, like, Anthony Bennett's the perfect example. If he's drafted 10th, no one even probably talks about him as a bust because it doesn't matter. But when you're the top pick or the second pick or the third pick, like, it's a different animal. So I, I think his inability to shoot the ball, I think his dad is explosive as all can be to where he could totally screw this up. I, I just, there's a lot to me that screams like this could be really bad. Let me add on to that. So think about this, the difference. He passes the ball a lot like Rondo, right? They both dribble, 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 no look. Can I interrupt you though? Rajon Rondo is a really good example because he doesn't shoot it well, but Rajon Rondo is super freaking smart. And he, he knows ex- exactly where everybody's supposed to be. Agreed. He only cares about winning. Yep. He doesn't care about highlights. He doesn't care about stats. So when you look at LaMelo Ball and all he's cared about really since he was probably in high school is like, you know, looking cool on Instagram, that to me is a problem. Yeah. That is a huge problem. And that's not just a LaMelo ball problem. That's probably more of a, like, that's the way that kind of kids are being brought up now because it's what they get affirmed on. So like, what is your concern? Would you rather win or would you rather look cool? That's, that's a good question to, to a lot of the guys in the draft, but especially to LaMelo ball. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, horrible takes like this are the reason why closer and closer as the draft came, the mellow ball started to fall from number one in the draft to number three in my drafts to number seven and all the way down to numbers as far as 10. Teams were supposedly afraid of the circus that came with him and his family. And this... This is the reason the night that LaMelo was finally drafted by the Charlotte Hornets, you start getting introductory press conference and press clips like this from one money-making Mitch Kupchak. There may not have been a lot of excitement you know, as to who the top three picks were, uh, quite frankly. Wait a minute. You just drafted a 6'7 point guard in the mold of Anthony Hardaway, Jason Williams, and Magic Johnson with a Pistol Pete Love child, and you're not excited about it? Using the word point guard, I've heard you use the term ball handling card, like you don't, don't like to over specify things. Um, the fact that you have now LaMelo and Devontae and Terry. How do you en- envision those three guys' skills blending together? Rick, I don't think it'll be a problem. First of all, you know, LaMelo, you know, is not going to be given minutes, you know, because he was drafted number three. Uh, there are going to be expectations, and I think the kid's going to work hard, and I think he'll earn some minutes. Uh, but whatever he gets, you know, he'll have to earn. Um, and Devontae and Terry, I'm sure they will welcome him as a teammate, but they want to play. And, you know, they're going to compete. So uh, whatever he gets, you know, he will earn. Paul will not be given any minutes. He'll have to earn his minutes. You're acting like you didn't just draft a 6'7 transcendent franchise-changing guard. You're acting like you just drafted a charity case. And you even mentioned the name Terry Rozier and Devontae Graham in the same sentence. No offense, Terry. Terry, who's a 6'1 Boston Celtics castaway at that time, and Devontae Graham, well, I think he plays for the New Orleans Hornets, Pelicans, Shanghai Sharks. I don't care. 
But in order to get down to this man, it's to get to the root of this investigation, we must flash back to James Borrego's introductory press conference. College. I just wanted someone to give me a chance and grow and impact people's lives. But coaching was a main part of this. Coaches for me helped develop me, grow me, help me to compete. They showed me how to compete. And that's why one of this, this opportunity here in front of me with Charlotte is so attractive is because of the competitive element. I see a, an owner that's probably one of the most competitive guys we've ever seen, six-time NBA champion, Mitch Kupchak, 10-time NBA champion, competitors at all levels. I look at our roster. This is a roster of guys that have won at different levels. They want to win more, but they won at multiple levels. I'm not inheriting a team of 18, 19 year olds. Now somebody jumped through the fourth wall, break through it, and grab me through my Mac as I edit this video. And tell me, does this sound like a guy that wants to coach this guy? No, 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 wait a second. No, 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 this guy. This is a group of men that has won, and that's exciting to me. I'm excited by this roster. There's some youth here. There's some veterans here. This group is... So, if I had to put it plainly, just based off investigation one, the Charlotte Hornets drafted a guy they thought had immense talent and was just too talented to pass up on. Also, that so-called circus, they knew it would put butts in the seats, views on the line, and hits on Twitter. All this brings revenue to the franchise. I don't think it's some diabolical scheme of JB where he just doesn't like LaMelo. I just think he is what he is, which is a system coach that is used to coaching guys that are second rounders, younger guys, or older veterans that are not as flashy, not as much flair. So LaMelo's kind of out of his comfort zone. But you know what, JB? Get over it. That's why you're a head coach. You're at the point now, but like Brother Barson in the Blue Flame said, you got to adjust yourself to LaMelo, not the other way around. We'll keep digging on this investigation. Everyone, make sure you pull up to the best live streams tonight, the watch party in the lit house. Hopefully, hopefully to God, LaMelo Ball plays tonight against the Boston Celtics on ESPN. I see you tonight in the league. Yeah, yeah. Bitches cause I bought them mean I play them wrong. Yeah. I hop off the jet and count a hundred thousand. If it ain't money, what you talking about? Go out of my bitch. Cause I bought them mean I play them wrong yeah. I hop off the jet and count a hundred dollars If it ain't money, what you talking about?